Until today, humans have only dreamed of flying cars. From experimental designs in the early 19th century to the 1960s cartoon The Jetsons and the blockbuster franchise Star Wars. But now, China has made it a reality. Flying cars are just one component of what China calls its low altitude economy. There are also drones, airships, and taxis, also known as eVTOL aircraft, or electric vertical takeoff and landing. As the industry grows, more companies have turned their sights from land to the skies, leading to the rise of China's low altitude economy. The low uh, altitude economy includes manned and unmanned activities within the airspace below a thousand meters. And it could be drones or helicopters. And um, actually China has been talking about de developing it for many, many years. Um, but the progress has been slow. But now, um, the, because low attitude economy has been uh, recognized by policymakers as a, a sort of emerging market, a sort of growth, new growth engine. In China, all you have to do is look up to see what she's talking about. There is a demand for faster connection, especially for business travelers getting around between airports, hotels, city center, train stations. So there is a venue uh, for such um, development. Um, it can also enhance experience for tourists um, as well. So, and they are already experimenting different uses of drones. A flying taxi cuts travel time to work, although it's a service still too expensive for most. An airship takes tourists on an adventure through the mountain and a drone delivers food and drinks to the Great Wall. In 2023, the low altitude economy in China was valued at over 500 billion yuan, according to official numbers. By 2030, the industry is expected to reach 2 trillion yuan, or 280 billion US dollars. The Chinese economy has struggled to recover since the pandemic. But investors are flocking to the low altitude economy for a boost, particularly drones or unmanned aerial vehicles. Most drones for now are being rolled out for basic services like food and package delivery. Reviews have been mixed on Chinese social media. But it's not just food. Drones are capable of doing amazing things. Chinese drone maker DJI completed the world's first drone delivery tests to the top of Mount Everest, carrying oxygen canisters and food to base camp at 6,000 meters high. It came back with rubbish. Drones aren't just for fun or filming or even just taking aerial pictures anymore. They're becoming essential tools in the real world scenarios like um, helping emergency responders, uh, mapping you know, really hard to reach areas for disaster relief, or even putting out Wi-Fi's wi quickly. One province in particular is leading the charge in the drone boom. Southern Guangdong province hosts the most number of low-altitude economy enterprises in China. Major industry leaders like DJI, Yihang, and Zero Tech are all based there. 
Beijing laid out plans to connect most of the Greater Bay Area along a low-altitude transport network, linking 11 cities in the region within a one-hour commute, including Hong Kong, Macau, Guangzhou, Shenzhen, and Zhuhai. Despite its lofty ambitions, China's market still needs to lower the high consumer cost. So the question is whether they'll find um, benefits in, for example, uh, drone delivery. So it might, it might make sense if you are delivering to a really remote area, a small package, a drone can do it. But is it um, cost efficient um, to do so when you have tons of parcels, maybe a truck? could still do the job. Take the flying taxi as another example. Ehong is the first company in China to receive approval to produce these aircraft, which don't require traditional airports, runways, or heliports. But while this service can save you from traffic jams and peak hours, the cost of the ride is much higher compared to land transport. A flight from Shenzhen Airport to Hong Kong's Central District costs 13,600 yuan for a 15-minute flight, according to air charter operator Heli Eastern. At the same time, China has not yet achieved full autonomy over its low-altitude supply chain. Regulation is another big concern. In 2024, Shenzhen became the first city in China to enact a comprehensive low-altitude law, covering where and how these vehicles are flown. But even with the new limits in place, residents have complained. As of now, it appears the low-altitude economy is limited to simple tasks, but innovators are aiming high. China has taken the initiative to usher in a new era of transport that may redefine how we navigate cities and beyond. <laughs>